Which would just throw in amendments where willy nilly. What if we wanted to, I don't know, track the weapons that any of these America haters have bought, or maybe do a background check if any of them try to purchase weapons here in America? <laughs> is protected in the Constitution. There's no ambiguity here. Well, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Oh, no ambiguity there. <laughs> you know, and since in the last few decades there's been 3,400 deaths from terrorism, Islamic and otherwise, and in that same period we've had nearly, I don't know, a million deaths from gun violence, 30 to 40,000 a year every year. Is there anything we can do about that? What Constitution? Vice President Joe Biden says the president may crack down on guns by executive order, a.k.a. taking our right to bear arms away Yes, it turns out there's only one amendment in our Constitution's pantheon that is exempt from statistical analysis or emotional freak outitude. <laughs> and it is the second. So God help us if the Muslims ever decide to form a well-regulated militia. <laughs> but I have no way to stop them. We'll be right back. Come on, you can give him a hand for that. That was good. <laughs> Even if you don't like Jon Stewart, nobody's better at calling out hypocrisy on the right than Jon Stewart. Now, if he just do it on the left, yeah. we'd all be a little bit better off. So the bottom line here is, and I think he, he sets it up pretty well here, which is that at the end of the day, political parties and media, they're playing the same game with the Constitution. Now, we didn't need to show you a long clip of how CNN or MSNBC feel about the Second Amendment, because we know how they feel about the Second Amendment, right? We know that Piers Morgan goes on and on and on and on and on and drones for weeks and weeks and weeks because he can get like 10 people to watch him, <laughs> talking about how we've got to get rid of the Second Amendment and take guns away from American citizens, because clearly they don't need them anymore. You only need them for hunting and sport and those kinds of things. The right is not regarding due process or privacy rights in this country, nor is the left, quite honestly. The left is not protecting privacy or Second Amendment rights. And so liberty must rise in order to protect the full rights of American citizens. So whoever asked me, and I think it was you, sir, which hand do I put up, the right or the left? Both sides. Both sides have to protect the full rights of American citizens. Would you agree? Yeah. All right. I'm just trying to wake these people up. Come on. This poor guy's arm can be tired down here. He's holding this thing this whole time. All right. <laughs> So I want to show you something here. Thomas Jefferson said this, I know no safe depository of the ultimate powers of the society, but who? The people. The people. Can I hear you say the people? The people. The people themselves. And if we think them not enlightened enough to exercise their control with a wholesome discretion, the remedy is not to take it from them, but to inform their discretion by education. This is the true corrective of abuses of constitutional power. Somebody send that over to Rick Santorum, please. I'm only going to do that one. I'm only going to do that one. I'm, I, he's, a, he's a good man. So, um, all right. I won't argue. Let's not argue here. So how does liberty rise? So the idea behind this project that we've launched, the, the Liberty is Rising project, is a truth in media project, and it's actually three platforms, and tonight we're going to talk about how to make this happen. The three-step process is step one is to inform, step two is to engage, and step three is to activate. Let's start with information. George Orwell said it well, the people will believe what the media tells them that they will believe. So let's talk about the NSA for a minute, and this, I think this is just a good example. We could do this with a lot of different examples, obviously, but I think this is a great one. So with the NSA, how has the media covered the story? Well, the first thing that the media decided to do was go after, of course, Edward Snowden's background. Who is he? Who's he dating? Who's the young woman that he was engaged to or dating? And what about his home in Hawaii? And how did he know they were coming for him already? And was it already beginning to leak out? Was he already under scrutiny before he decided to do this? Who are these Chinese people that he's connected to? And it was all about Ed Snowden. Everything, there's no award in his name, but everything was about this guy. <laughs> Who is he? And what was he doing? And what they weren't talking about, well, was the NSA. But they moved on from there and they started talking about this connection to China and Russia. And quite honestly, um, I'm, I'm hoping to talk with Senator uh, Rand Paul about this because he's made a couple of comments about it lately, which I, I desire to hammer him on. Uh, specifically talking about the fact that, man, this is going to be bad news if Snowden is connected to China or Russia or if he, if he goes to them for some kind of help or if he, if he flees to those countries. So where is he supposed to go? If you're a whistleblower 
and granted, obviously, there is a certain procedural legal standard for being a whistleblower. You can't just declare yourself one. But if he is a whistleblower, where is he to go? Is he to be like Bradley Manning? Is that his fate? Or does he go to China or Russia or to Ecuador or some place where they'll give him the opportunity to live outside of a prison cell? <laughs> Meanwhile, the latest one that happened this week, did you guys see it? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah if you saw it, you probably saw it in a clip, a clip rerun, right? Because nobody's actually watching Piers Morgan say this. But it was on Piers' show. And the comment, it wasn't Pierce who said it, but one of his guests said that the reason that Glenn Greenwald covered this story is because he, his words, hates America. That's incredible. It's incredible. Glenn Greenwald covers whistleblowers. He says he has this kind of affection to cover these stories, and he's really drawn to these stories because of his hatred for America. Well, let's assume for a second that's even true, which I don't believe that it is, but I don't know Glenn Greenwald. It could be true. Even if it's true, so what? Your response to the idea that this guy is talking about and interviewing whistleblowers, instead of again talking about what he is saying, is instead about, no, he must be a bad messenger. And if the messenger is bad enough, then the message doesn't matter. We're going to try another video here. You might have to hold that in, okay? We'll see if it works. Uh, this guy's pretty good, so we'll see what he has to say. <laughs> well, consider this. The Patriot Act is without question a law that in many ways overreaches constitutionally protected rights of U.S. citizens. But even within that overreach, Section 215 requires the government to provide facts to show that the information that they are gathering relates to a foreign intelligence or terrorism investigation. Is it possible that the NSA was doing that through PRISM? that among the millions and millions of Verizon customers, there are cases where the NSA was investigating connections to terrorism. Yeah, it is possible. But what's not possible is that every single Verizon customer, even more so, that every wireless customer in America has made calls relating to a foreign intelligence or terrorism investigation. In short, what the media has not told you and what most lawmakers won't admit to is that even by the overreaching standards of the Patriot Act, what the NSA has been doing and is still doing is clearly illegal. So what you need to know, well, that is actually the fundamental question of our time. Here it is. Forget email and phone records and fear of terrorism. The real question, do you possess any actual rights? If the Constitution guarantees your protection from unlawful search and seizure, guarantees freedom of speech, freedom of association, due process when charged with a crime, and yet all of those rights can be suspended, not because you are a terrorist per se, but because the government wants to know if you might be a terrorist or might be connected to a terrorist, then you never actually had those rights in the first place. So when you hear someone say, hey, if you're not doing anything wrong, you have nothing to worry about. What they're actually saying is, if I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't need to have rights. Benjamin Franklin saw it very differently, saying those who would trade essential liberty for temporary safety deserve neither and lose both. And that is full disclosure. So unless we begin to change the media narrative in America, unless we begin to change that, then liberty will not rise. So when we talk about this opportunity, this window, this chance that we have to really make a difference, it has to begin with media because as we've demonstrated, it's just not going to work otherwise. Too many people being told too many things that are untrue, being distracted from the real issues of our time. I think a great example of this is Senator Paul's filibuster over drone strikes on U.S. citizens. Yeah. And to be quite honest with you, it was, uh, everything was right about this. Everything was done in the right way. He was clear in what he was doing. It was clear that when John Brennan, uh, was, was, uh, his nomination was being debated in the Senate, that he wasn't going to try to stop the president from being able to appoint who he wants to appoint. He made that clear and made it clear that this wasn't about John Brennan. It was 